Hello, and today we're looking at constructing pie charts, something that uh, some of our students do understandably struggle with. There are a few steps, but I want to try and make this a little bit easy for you. So let's have a look at a question or an example that we use in one of our packs uh, that we offer with your teachers. And uh, this week's pack is about constructing and reading uh, pie charts. So this example, let's have a look. The pie chart below shows the grades achieved by 30 students in their end of year exam. So here you can see a chart and it has grade and frequency on the side. And here are the grades A, B, C, D and E. Let's have a look at the number of students that achieved these grades. So there were seven students that achieved A, 11 students that is achieved B, six of the students achieved C, four of the students achieved D and two of the students achieved E. Now, they have already told us that 30 of these students achieved or uh, their end of year exam. So they had completed them. These are the grades. They are the total. So what I want to do here is you can add these grades. Add, 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 and add. And they should give you 30, and they do. Okay, so 7 plus 11 is 18. 18 plus the 2 is 20. Plus the 6 is 26. Plus the 4 is 30. So we've got 30 students. So tip number one, I'm going to write on my post-it note because when we're writing our notes, it's always good to remember these things by writing little notes to ourselves. So we've got to find out the total. Good. So we've got the total. Good job. Right. So we'll put that on the side just to help me to remember okay so we've got our total done the next thing we need to do is we need to convert this into a fraction and the reason why is because when we are drawing out our pie charts we know what they look like don't we we know that to do your pie chart you need a compass and a pencil that's my pen running away there all right so if i was to draw a pie chart I would need to draw a circle using a compass now we do have another video showing you how to use a pencil and a compass the right size of pencil that you'd need how to make sure everything is aligned etc so to draw your circle you can be you might be as smooth as this you might need to sway like this or you can do it all in one go if you're able to Okay, and it, we do show you how to do this. If ever you need uh, a few tips, uh, then please go and watch the video. So here we have that done. Now, we know that when we're starting to draw, as I'll draw a little dot here, you need to then draw, have segments for each one. So each of the segments is going to represent each of the data here that we've got. So what we've got to do next is now turn these into fractions. So this is how we turn these into fractions. So I'm going to write the word fractions here. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got seven students out of 30, 11 students out of 30, and I go, I carry this on. So I've got six students uh, out of 30, four students out of 30, and I've got two students out of 30. So here are my fractions. So here I'm going to write down fractions as my next thing that needs to be done. So I've got my pen and I write number two. The next thing is fractions. So we've done that. Remember, at any time, if you need to press pause, rewind, play then do so so we've got our fractions the next thing we need to do is we need to multiply this find the decimal number now to do this you can use a calculator i'm going to be using this calculator this is a casio this is the what type of uh, calculator that you're told to use at school is particularly in secondary school um, and you get different types of Casios I'm sure they'll get updated but here this is like a mini computer I like I love using these so here we're now going to turn these into a decimal so that we can convert it into an angle so we do 11 let's start off with seven sorry let's start off with this one seven seven divided by 30 
equals, and there we have it as a fraction. And now we need to multiply that by 360, okay? Now we need to do that because we know that a whole turn, when you, if you were to measure that, if you, a whole turn, this is a, a protractor, and we do get two types of protractors. You can get a semicircle protractor, or you can get one like this. The, you know, again, they're becoming more and more advanced these days. So this protractor here, um, we'll use this, but a, a protractor uh, will measure all the way around to 360 degrees. Okay, so 360 degrees. So what we've got to do is each of these will represent one degree angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert these fractions by multiplying them by 360. So we do multiply 7 over 30, multiply that by 360, and that will give me an answer. Then I'm going to do the next one, 11 times that by 360. And you're going to use a calculator to do these. 360 degrees, 4 over 30 times that by 360 degrees. And my last one, let's squeeze that in uh, by 30, uh, multiply that by 360 degrees. Okay, so let's work these out and box these. And they should give us an answer. So let's use our calculator to do this now. Uh, so we've got, we worked out this, didn't we? So it was 84. So let's put down 84 here. Let's do the next one together, okay? So we've got 11 divided by 30 equals, and you can press the SD button if you like. That will give turn it into a fraction. And you can multiply that by 360. That gives me 132. And then we have the next one. So you can carry this on. Remember, you can press pause at any time if that helps uh, to do that. Uh, and if you need to press pause to do some calculating, that will help. And I'm just rubbing out some of my markings out here. That would help us. Let's do this. So let's see. The next one is six. Six divided by thirty. Multiply that by three sixty equals seventy two. The next one four divided by thirty equals multiply that by three sixty forty eight. And the last one, 2 divided by 30 equals, multiply that by 360, 24. Now, the degrees is important. The total is really important because if we know, just like we knew that our frequency here the number of students would add up to 30 just as they told us just as they told us in the question here or in the brief that 30 students had achieved their exams so when i added up the total here it gave me 30 and just the same we know that a whole turn is 360 degrees Okay, we know it's 360 degrees. So really, all of these should also add up to 360. So I'm going to check that. So all of these answers, all of these answers here, I'm going to add these up. Because it should give me 360, okay? Because if it doesn't give me 360, I've got a problem. So this is a good way to check. We always want to check. Add 72. Add 48. And look at the way it 
comes up on the calculator you can see what you so if you ever forget what you last typed it's just there so that's handy 24 equals look 360 so that means that all of these are correct if it gave me another digit or the wrong answer to 360 that means i've got to start again okay so the first step was one we needed a total which we found out here all right the second step was to find out fractions and we need to convert them out of fractions remember we put the total at the bottom okay 30 30 then the next step was to times by 360 degrees and the fourth one is to get your angle all right so now we have our angles and we can measure all right so there are our four golden steps so we've just done this and now we're going to start constructing using our information our angles so let's do that now we get nice bit of paper and i need to use this information here this information is going to help me construct my pie chart. So remember, if any time you need to pause, revisit, then do so. We do have a video to show you how to use a compass. We've got a video to show you how to use a uh, protractor if needed as well. So here we go. Here goes my circle. It does, ooh, and if that happens, not to worry, you have to try and find your pinpoint, okay? And that's not a bad thing. Um, people make mistakes, they make slip ups and all sorts, and you don't have to do it all in one go. You can swerve and just go back onto the center, okay? Now, I do show you how you can do this all in one go, but uh, like I said, when you're using a compass, you can sway from side to side if it, if it helps. Um, now, let's use this information. The first thing I need to do is draw my centre point there, all right? And then I need 84 degrees, so I need a starting point. Just as you would do with a ruler, with a ruler, you would start from zero. But on a compass, I'm going to use this one here, but with a compass, you've also got to start from zero and we need to start from somewhere. So you first draw your line. I, you need a straight edge of some sort. So I can use a ruler. You can use, if you need a starting point, you can also use just, you could use just this, just this here. Okay, to draw a straight line. So this is going to be my starting point. And my first one I need is 84 degrees. So I make sure that this is sitting on the line. It's transparent so that you make sure you can see that it's sitting on the line. So this must stay on the dot. Can you see that clearly? And this, look, this is not accurate. It needs to be on it perfectly so I cannot see the pencil drawn line and it, there's my zero i'm not going to use a second set of numbers i'm going to use a first set of numbers starting at zero and i need to find 84 right so here's 70 80 this is 80 81 82 83 84 so here's my little marking for 84 and i need a straight line i need an edge straight edge to join this up so i'm not going to go all the way from outside i'm just going to touch the top of my circle there and then i'm going to use this new line to start off for my next amount okay so this is my 84 percent or degree sorry uh, so let's do this. So 132 is what I'm looking for next. 132. So I start from here. Make sure the center is on the intersect there. Okay. 
okay? Zero, and now we're going to go to 132, 131, and two. There we go. And instead of drawing from there, I'll just make sure it touches the top of that, the circumference. There we go. All right, so this is 132. Start from my new line again, and I need now 72. So I've just done that, just done that. All right, I'm looking at 72 now. Okay. 72 on the center line, sitting on the lice line here no look i can't go from this side because i'm continuing from here so now i'm going to do this okay and here i need to do four seventy two so zero seventy one seventy two let's do that And my next one is 48, right? So let's go for 48. Again, drawing from there, 48. So I'm going to turn this around. This was 72, wasn't it? 48. 40, this is 50. So going two down, one. There we go. 48. And the last one here, so I've just done that one, take that one off, 24. And the last one should be 24. So if I sit it here and measure it, yeah, that is 24. So this is 24 degrees. So remember, if any time you need to press pause, you can. And that's how you construct your pie chart using the information. So let's go through those tips again. Number one. Find the total, number two, turn it into a fraction, number three, times it by 360, each of them, make sure it totals up to 360, and then find your angles using your protractor. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you need any further help with drawing circles or using a protractor, please use our other videos or watch our other videos of press pause at any time rewind forward etc and please um, subscribe and like our videos and send us a comment or if you need any further or have any further questions don't hesitate to get in touch good luck